Uh, I will next call upon stage uh, Dr. Modit Tyagi, a senior consultant, LV Prasad Eye Institute. He will be talking about adjuncts in macular hose surgery, what are the options and how to use them. All right, so good morning. First of all, pardon my throat. I've got a bad throat right now. And first of all, let me thank Dr. Dhanshri Ratna, ma'am, and everybody here at SN for asking me to be here. It's a humbling experience. A lot of what I do in Retina, a lot of what I know in Retina, directly or indirectly, owes it to Shankar Netra, my teachers, mentors, friends, all of them have been from this place. And in one way or the other, I've learned from all of you, including Dr. Dhanshri Ratra, ma'am, Dr. Pramod Binde, sir, Dr. Muna Binde, ma'am, Dr. LD, sir. The list goes on and on. So directly or indirectly, I have been kind of a student of this place. So thank you for having me here. And without further ado, I'll stop, start talking about what are adjuncts in macular hole surgeries. Now, what do we mean by the word adjunct? Adjunct essentially is a thing which is added as a supplement rather than an essential part. So that brings us to the question, what are the essentials? Now, we have had multiple talks till now. Pass plana vitrectomy and removal of the internal limiting membrane are essentials. And we have just had a talk which talks about the role of tamponade. Now, whether it's essential or not is something which is debatable. There are multiple thoughts behind that. So we come on to what are the adjuncts which we can use. Now, the adjuncts predominantly, which have been described earlier, are autologous serum, viscoelastics, and something which we have been working upon a lot, fibrin glue. Now, if you look at autologous serum, what does autologous serum do? Predominantly, people said that autologous serum contains some growth factors, helps in a better earlier closure of these holes. So this is one of our patients where we did add autologous serum to one of our patients before we placed an ILM flap in this case. But studies essentially show that the anatomical and visual outcomes in cases where either you have used autologous serum or not do not have much of a difference. So kind of rules out autologous serum. Viscoelastics, again, we have seen some videos earlier, are essentially used to keep the flaps in place. So that's what they do. But moving on to the third thing, which is fibrin glue, which is what we have been using for some of our patients. And these are patients who are unable to maintain positioning for one reason or the other. So this is one case, this was a lady who had kyphoscoliosis, had some spinal problems and could not maintain positioning in any sort of a way. Presented to us with a visual acuity of 20 by 200 and a large macular hole. And therefore, this is how the patient looks post-operatively. What we had done was that we had done an ILM peeling and had placed a coagulum of fibrin glue. Now, what does fibrin glue does? Like what we discussed about the role of tamponade, it prevents fluid from ingressing in. It does kind of also, by its contractile force, helps in bringing tissue together and also provides a scaffold for the glial tissue proliferation. So the technique is simple. Do an ILM peeling. After that, in an air-filled globe, subsequently just put a drop of fibrin glue to cover the break or the hole over here in this question. So this one, one patient after doing an ILM peeling in this case, in a completely air-filled globe subsequently, what you can do is put a drop of fibrin glue to cover the break. Now fibrin comes in two components, a thick one and a thin one. So the idea is to put a thick component of the glue first and then subsequently just one drop of the thin component. And you wait for two to three minutes and in just two minutes a thick coagulum gets formed. And this coagulum can be lifted, deposited. But what we did was over here that at the edges, we did completed the fluid air exchange again so as to ensure that the entire area is completely dry. And we just placed and deposited the coagulum to cover the macular hole in this case. So this is how the patient was on the first post-operative day in a flu air fi fluid filled globe with the coagulum covering the break. And this is how the patient was at one week with the visual equity improvement to 20 hundred. So this is how the patient evolves first post-operative day, coagulum covering the break or the hole in question. And at one week, visual equity improving to 20 by 100 and the macular hole being closed. Another case, visual equity 20 by 160, 967 microns of the hole diameter. At the one week, you can see the hole getting closed over here. And at one month, again, the macular hole has closed, the visual equity is improved to 20, 100. Fibrin glue has been shown to be absolutely not toxic to the retina and it gets absorbed spontaneously within a span of one week. We have used it earlier in a lot of our cases of retinal detachments, but now we have started exploring its role as an adjunct in macular holes, specifically in eyes of patients who are unable to maintain positioning and who cannot basically be resorted to using the conventional tamponades in form of air or gas. So like we said, gas or air acts as a scaffold over macular hole for glial proliferation. And the surface tension also tends to extrude the subretinal fluid around the hole. 
but we believe that fibrin glue over the hole also prevents fluid entry and its contraction post-operatively may lead to a position of hole edges resulting in closure apart from also acting as a scaffold for glial proliferation. So in conclusion, it's an effective adjunct tamponade, though we still are exploring its role in most of our cases and can help in avoiding need for post positioning and also obviate the problems which we associate with conventional gas tamponade. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Mudit.